What's up motivators, Taryn here. We just wrapped up a three-day training camp with curling world champion and Olympian Joanne Courtney, who is a Motive Ambassador. She's recently retired from curling and she's getting into triathlon. Make sure to go follow Joanne on Instagram. Link is in the description below to where you can find her. It's at JoanneCourtney89. She is an absolute savage with training and seeing her develop into an athlete who knows how to push herself, but also an athlete who has to learn how to pace herself is going to be really interesting. So go follow her on Instagram, wish her luck, and it's gonna be an interesting journey. Thanks for being here, Joanne. So while she was here, she wanted to make sure that her training zones are going to be set properly. So to do that, we went through the process of start to finish setting up her training zones with a max heart rate test, with a low heart rate test, and then setting up all of her zones so that she knows how to do it. Now you might think, hey, hasn't this been talked about with percentage of a max heart rate or math method or whatever it might be? What we've actually found out is that for about 20 to 30% of the population, those traditional methods of figuring out your heart rate training zones really don't apply to a lot of people. And Joanne is actually a perfect case of this. So today we are going to go through how we set up the training zones for Joanne in such a way that it can apply to absolutely everyone and be customized to your exact physiology. My name is Taryn Gazelle. In my 20s, I was overweight, unfulfilled, and couldn't even run to the end of the block. Over the following years, I found endurance sports, lost 65 pounds, won age groups, raced world championships, broke records, and trained and learned from some of the best athletes and coaches in the world. You too can use endurance sports to change your life and accomplish your fitness goals. You just need a system, a system that's meant for us amateurs who wanna be our best while feeling our strongest and healthiest. My company Motive offers that system and I wanna share some of the tips from it today. So while we have Joanne warming up for her max heart rate test on the screen, I wanna talk a little bit about the traditional and most common methods of figuring out your heart rate training zones. Those being the 220 minus your age and then setting a percentage of that calculation for all of your training zones. Or maybe the math method where it's 180 minus your age and then you add or subtract based on a couple of yes, no answers. And we've historically used this. And these are, I would say generally accurate for about 70 to 80% of the population. Fact of the matter is though, that they're kind of arbitrary. They're just a guess of what your physiology actually is. So we had a lot of athletes that would come and say, my heart rate is just way off from these zones. How can they be right? That's why we prefer the Carvenin heart rate training zone method. And there are simply two steps in doing this, and this is what we took Joanne through. So the test that we use for the athletes inside of our Motive training app is as follows. We do a two mile easy warm up jog, just very easy, no pace, no heart rate, just feel good, feel easy. Then we do one mile, about 1600 meters of tempo effort. This is in between about five and 10K race pace. This is comfortably fast. You don't wanna be burnt out by the end of that mile, but you wanna be working fairly hard. And then we go into 400 meters max effort. And if you can do it on a slight incline, that's gonna jack your heart rate up a lot more. And at the end of that 400 meters, we do another 400 meters where every 100 meters you go and get pushed more and more. So you go through all of these continuously. Two miles easy warm up, right into the one mile tempo, right into the 400 meters, right into the final 400 meters, where at every 100 meter interval, you're getting pushed more and more. If you have somebody alongside of you giving you all of the splits, get those splits at the 100 meters and have them yelling at you, having them freaking out on you. Well, this is what we did with Joanne. Come on. Everything you got, there's no pacing, there's no holding back. And what we found with her was that her max heart rate in this test was 208 beats per minute. She's in her 30s, so if we were just using the typical 220 minus your age, the percentages and the heart rate zones would have been off by 10 to 20 beats per minute. She wouldn't have been able to train and actually use those zones. They would have been completely irrelevant. Then for the minimum heart rate test, we had her use a watch that had an optical heart rate sensor on the back and then she went to sleep. And we took the lowest heart rate reading that she used while she was asleep. Then 
we will go into our app to show you how this ends up resulting in your actual heart rate zones. So this is Joanne's motive training app and the setup that she's got. Over here in the zone setup, we click to edit data. And remember how I said it was 208 beats was her max heart rate? What we're looking to enter is absolute physiological max heart rate. I always recommend that no matter what your highest heart rate is, add about two, maybe three beats per minute because I bet with a gun to your head, your heart rate would be a little bit higher. So we give you the benefit of the doubt on that. So that would have put Joanne's 208 at 210 or 211, but we actually even bumped it up a little bit extra because it was raining and it was cold, so heart rate would be a little bit low. These aren't absolute exact because we're not in a lab here. We just want to approximate. So if you do this when it's really hot, you don't need to bump up by too much, maybe two or three beats. If you do it when it's really cold, maybe bump up by five as we did with Joanne here. Then the resting heart rate that she got was 65, we gave her again the benefit of the doubt that it could be a little bit lower because she had just done a max heart rate test, she was traveling, she was in an unfamiliar place, staying in our basement suite, so we entered 61. We just want to get it within reason and very close and it's going to be different by maybe a beat or two based on what you input. So we have the max heart rate, the resting heart rate, we click done and out pops 152 to 167. Her super easy heart rate is 129 to 152. And beyond this, what we did with Joanne was, I went out for, for an easy run and didn't tell her I was doing this. I wanted to chat with her and just keep it easy and see where she was at with a pace and a heart rate that she could talk comfortably, but it wasn't any secret that she was working out. Like if she was on a call, she would be clearly exercising. Everyone on that call would know that she was exercising. And that comfortable talking pace, but just slightly aware that you are definitely exercising, that is really close to the top of your zone two, which is really where we want to find that heart rate. So the day that we did that training session, her average heart rate was 161. So this allows us to back test, yes, we got the max heart rate right, we got the zones right, right around that 152 to 167, that's where we wanna be. So this is how we use that heart rate data. You'll also notice that over here, we don't have heart rate data calculated for zones three, four, and five. The reason for that is that the intervals where you do work in zone three, four, and five are short enough that it takes a long time for your heart rate to climb into that. So heart rate isn't really an accurate measure because you can't really use it, practically speaking, for definitely zone five efforts where they're one to three or four minutes it might take four minutes for your heart rate to climb. So that's not going to be really relevant. Also, if you're doing four to 10 minute, 20 minute intervals for zone four, well, again, it's going to take the first big chunk of that interval for the heart rate to climb. So it's going to mess with your head. That's why we don't use heart rate for those zones and that's why we're going to start working out her power and her pace data. If you're wondering how the Carvanin formula actually works, we can just go over here and this actually shows it a little bit better. This is calculatorsoup.com. We've entered Joanne's 213 and her 61. And how it works is, let's say we're looking at her top of zone one. You take 213 minus 61, that's called your heart rate reserve and then you take that number and you multiply it by 60%, and then you add that to the 61. So 213 minus 61 multiplied by 0.6 plus 61, and the top of that number is the top of zone one. And then it goes onwards with the same multiple, 213 minus 61 multiplied by 0.7, add that number to 61, and that's how you get the top of each zone. So it's based on your unique physiology of what your resting heart rate is, what your maximum heart rate is, as opposed to just some arbitrary number. And then just to zip over to Joanne's training plan, what we do in the training plan in our app is we actually give the heart rate data right in the workout so there's no question of when to use heart rate, when to use rate of perceived exertion, when to use power, when to use all of these things, and what the actual metric is that you should be going for based on your physiology and what you've been put in your zone. So she put in that data and we said, well, ride easy zones one or two, somewhere under 167 beats per minute 
for the majority of the ride. That's the process that I would recommend everyone go through for dialing in their heart rate zones. A max heart rate test, a min heart rate reading, figuring out the percentages of that heart rate reserve based on a Carvanen formula. You can do it in our app or you can do it on that calculator soup calculator and then using that number for the low intensity training as opposed to the high intensity training. Hopefully that helps you out. Thank you for watching Motivators. If you're looking for a training plan that incorporates these methods that is as good as a one-on-one -on -one coach but as inexpensive as doing it yourself, check out our Motive training app that covers triathlons, running races, duathlons, swim runs, and cycling events. It's a link in the description below where you can check out your customized training plan for free. Also, if you rather listen to these tips, we also publish these videos in podcast format on the Terran's Motive Method podcast, so you can check that out. And if you don't want to do either of those things, but you found this video helpful, hit us up with a virtual high five by smashing the like button below. Later, motivators.